In a practical way, how can we use the take function in Excel and the drop function in Excel? Both of those functions can take informations from a data set. However, the take function can include informations such as columns and rows. And in other hand, the drop function can exclude information, can read it off informations such as again rows or columns. Let's take a look here and let's get started first with the take function. But before we get started, let's understand what I have as the data set. Basically, I have a student performances uh, within the math, science, and English subjects. I have the student name, a couple of informations, and then math score, science score, English score, and average. Let's say I need to create some analysis from this data set that I have, but I don't want to include the header, for example. I want to read it off the title. I don't want to use some columns, and I don't want to use also a couple of rows. Let's say I need to read it off some informations. I can use the take or the drop function to help me. Let's get started with the take function. So in a new sheet, I want to start with the equal sign and then take. Double click in this function to select one, two. The take function has three different arguments, array, rows, and columns. But it's not because there is three different arguments that you need to use those three. You can stick just with, let's say, the first one, or the first one and the second one, or the first one and the third one, okay? Or you can use all those three arguments in just one single function. It doesn't matter. But let's start here with the array. The array that I want to use is the data that I have, that is within the data set sheet. Let me select everything that I have. I can either select the entire column A, B, C, and on and on, or I can select a smaller range, a specific range, like the one that I'm selecting here where I have my data. Now I'm going to press comma, and as you can follow throughout the formula bar, now I am in the rows argument. As the rows, I want to use all the rows that I have in my data set. So I'm going to skip for now this argument. So comma again. That way I, I am here in the columns. And as the columns, let's say I don't want to use all the columns, but just the first, second, and third column. That way I'm going to input as the number, as the column, the number three, because I would just want to use the three first columns. And then I can press enter. As you can see, now I have not everything in my data set, all the rows, of course, but not all the columns, just the first three columns. And I can also change. Instead of using a positive three, I can change to a negative three. That way I'm going to take the three last columns. Enter. As you can see, now I have the three last columns of my data set. And I can also change. Instead of using any argument within the columns, I can read it off this information. And then I can press enter. As you can see, now I have the entire data uh, from the data set. I can also change, instead of using, let's change the rows argument. Instead of using none, I can use maybe 10, because that way I'm going to take the first 10 rows. Enter, like this. Or, as we learned before, we can also use negative numbers, such as negative 10, minus 10, and then enter. The thing that is going to happen here when we are using a negative number within the rows is we're going to take the last rows or the last 10 rows that we have in the data set. So let's say I want you to, to create here uh, a analysis more specific. I just want to have the name of the students and the name of the students I need to input here as the column, the first one only, because it's the first column where I have the names and then enter. Okay. Now I have only the names of the students. Now I can go back to the first function where we did the take function, Cope everything literally that I have within this formula bar, right click and then go. In the next column in the cell B1, double click here, right click, paste what we did copy before. So again, I have exactly the same take function with the same argument in the columns. But now instead of using as the columns the first one, I want to use the last column, so negative one, and then enter. As you can see, now I have the student's names and also the average for each one of the different students that I have. Let me increase the size of those columns, the width, okay? Let me select everything in column B, home tab and change the number format to something more clear, let's say. Input the number format. So in general, I can change to number. Okay, now we have two decimal places for all the numbers that we have. So basically this is how we can use the take function in Excel. It can take everything that you want to use within the, from the data set. But the difference between the drop function in Excel is, as I said before, as the range, we can either select 
all the toggles that we have like this, the entire range, or a specific range, a smaller one like this. This time with the drop function, we can actually select all the columns that we have because with the drop function, we can read it off information instead of include information. That way I can read it off the first row, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one, and the sixth one. Okay, so I can read it off the headers and I can stick with only that data set. I think the drop function is a, good fun is a really good function to use because whenever you update your data set, everything, because you just selected the entire columns, all the columns, whenever you input new rows, new data, all those new rows, new data is going to be automatically updated within the drop function because the range. So let's go again here to the new sheet where we are creating the analysis. And maybe in the cell E1, I can equal sign drop function, one, two to select. As the array, as we learned before, is the range that I want to use as the data set. And this time I want to select everything, column A, B, C, D, until the column H, and then a comma. So basically, the drop front function can exclude some informations. So if I want to exclude some rows or the headers, I'm going to need to exclude uh, the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Okay, so I need to exclude six rows. So this is what are the number that I, I want to append within my function, the number six. And then I can press enter. As you can see, I have exactly the same data as before, but this time without the headers. I can also make some change within my drop function. So let's say I just want to use, I want to read it off this, the, the six first rows, and I also want to read it off, let's say the one, two, three, four, the fourth first columns. So this is what I'm going to input here, the number four. And then I'm going to press enter, and uh, you're going to be able to see that I'm going to have only the scores, the grades within my data set. Enter. And yeah, that's it. So math score, science score, English score, and then the average, only the grades. And we can also use here negative numbers. And remember, if we use negative numbers, we're going to read it off the last information from the last to the first. Okay, so this is the opposite. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video on how can we use the take function in Excel and also the drop function. And as you can see here, we can make analysis because we can actually slice and dice the data set that we have. We can have a large data set and then make it smaller. And that way we can create analysis such as only the names and the average. It kind of can work like a filter in Excel. Take and drop. If you have any questions or any suggestions to the next videos, let me know, comment down below, and I see you tomorrow. Yes, every day has a new video. I see you there.